Welcome to section 5.7, multiplying and dividing decimals. When you're multiplying and dividing decimals, especially actually for multiplying decimals, uh, I would strongly recommend you just stacking them vertically, just like when you're adding or subtracting them, because it will be a lot easier to do and multiply it that way. So let me show you quick. So the first step with multiplying decimals is you would just take your first digit and you end up multiplying by your first digit on top. Well, in this case, nine times five is 45. Uh, so five, carry the four. Nine times two then gets you 18. Add four more gets you to 22. Carry over the two. Nine times two is, oh no, nine times two, yeah. Nine times two is 18. This time we're adding two. So that would be 20. Now when we go to the eight, we have to add a zero because we've moved over one place. And now eight times our five gets us to 40. We can carry over the four. Eight times two is 16, plus four gets us to 20, carry over the two. Eight times two is 16, plus two is 18. Now we can add straight down. So five, two, zero, zero, carry over the one, two. Well, our answer here is way larger than 8.9 times 2.25. But what you have to do is add up how many decimal places did you have in the numbers that you multiplied and make sure you have that same total number at the end. So 8.9 had one decimal place, 2.25 had two decimal places. So our answer needs to have three. So that means one, two, three. Our answer is actually 20.025. One way you can check the reasonableness of this answer uh, is just round to your nearest leading digit or your nearest front number. So in this case, 2.25 would round to 2, 8.9 would round to 9. 2 times 9 is 18. Our answer is pretty close to 18. So that makes sense. That works. Let's try the next one. 5 times 3 will get us a 15. Carry the 1. 5 times 4 gets us 20. Add the one is 21. Now we add in the zero. Two times three is six. Two times four is eight. Now we can add straight down. So we get a five, we get a seven. Two plus eight gets us 10. Well, now we can go back and count the number of decimal places. So we have one, two. So our decimal place would move over two spots, 10.75. If we look at our original numbers, uh, the first number could round to four, the second number would round to three, four times three is 12. That's pretty close to 12, so that's a good answer. Now, if we're dividing numbers that have decimals, well, I don't know how many times 2.75 goes into 15, and it gets really confusing when we have more decimal places after that. So what I will suggest that you do is we're actually going to multiply both the inside of the de of the fraction or inside of your dividing chunk and the outside by 100 because what that will do is it will bring that decimal place over two values so now instead of figuring out stuff with decimals as much we will now have 1512.5 divided by 275. Well, this now at least gives us something that we can work with because we can look at 275 that can't fit into 151. So it would have to go up to 1,512. So how many times does 275 go into 1,512? Well, let's see. I'm thinking it's going to be five times. So if I put that five there, five times five is 25, carry over the two. Five times seven is 35, add the two is 37, carry over the three. Five times two is 10, plus three is 13. And now we can go and subtract. So this will come down to a four, that will be a 10, and this will be a 12. 12 minus five gets us down to seven. 10 minus seven is three. 4 minus 3 is 1, and now we can bring down that 0.5 at the end. Now you can keep doing the same work the same way that you just did. 
Uh, but on top, you need to remember that you will still keep your decimal in the same line. And 275 times what gets us to the same digits as 1375? Well, we just figured out that that number is 5. So 5 times 275 is 1375. Subtract that, we get a 0. So our answer in this case is 5.5. Now for this next one, the number that we are dividing by is our 6.3. So we'll actually just multiply everything by 10 to move our decimal over one place value. Well, if it was 63 and 600 that we had here, uh, so 663, whoops, divided by 601.02, if this was 60 and 600, that would be 10. But I don't quite think we're gonna get a full 10 in because 10 times 63 is 630, which is too big. So I think we're only gonna be able to fit nine in. So nine times three is 27, carry the two. Nine times six is 54 plus two is 56. And now we can subtract. So that's gonna go down to a five, a nine, and an 11. 11 minus 7 gets us down to 4. 9 minus 6 is 3. 5 minus 5 is 0. So now we can bring down our 0. Also remember, since we had a decimal place here, be sure to carry that up top. How many times does 63 go into 340? Uh, I am guessing that's going to be about 5 times. Let's try. 5 times 3 is 15. We can carry over the 1. 5 times 6 is 30. Add 1 is 31. Aha, there we go. So 340 minus 315 leaves us with 25 left over. And now we can bring down that 2. How many times does 63 go into 252? Four times. 4 times 3 is 12. Carry the 1. 4 times 6 is 24. Plus 1 is 25. So our answer then, in this case, is that 9.54. Let's do a couple more just to give you some final practice stuff with this. So when 6 is going into this 1.2, 6 can't fit into just 1. So we would put a 0 there and then put our decimal place there because we want to make sure you get those decimal places lined up. Now, how many times does 6 go into 12? Twice. 2 times 6 is 12. Subtract. You have no remainder. So your answer in this case is 0 0.2. Now, for this next one, we would want to multiply both sides by 10. So we can move that decimal place over once. So you'd have an 18 divided by 0, 0 0.126. 18 can't go into our zeros. So we're, well, let's put a zero on top as just a placeholder. And then we bring up that decimal place. Can 18 go into 001? No. So since we have that decimal place, we now need to start placing zeros after that to make sure we get our place values lined up correctly. Can 18 go into 12? No. So we need another zero there. Can 18 go into 126? Yes, 18 can go into 126, a total of seven times. Seven times eight is 56, carry the one. Seven times one is seven, plus five is 12. Now when we subtract those, we come out with a remainder of zero. So our answer in this case is 0 0.007. So you just need to make sure that you are keeping those zeros in as placeholders after your decimal point, Otherwise, your total answer at the end of number of decimal places is not going to line up well. So that's it. That's all I've got for you for today. So good luck. And remember to shoot me an email if you have any questions.